Welcome to the .3D for iOS beta. This brief tutorial will quickly get you up and running with this new release of our .3D scanning software for Apple devices equipped with built-in LiDAR. This includes the iPad Pro 2020 and 2021, which we're operating on right now, as well as the iPhone 12 and 13 Pro or Pro Max. Before you start your scan, you might wanna check your version number. So we'll quickly show you how to do that from settings, about, about, where you see version, in this case, 0.16.25, AKA beta number 25, which is the current latest and greatest release. It's important to stay up to date on the beta updates uh, as things are changing very rapidly right now. However, automatic updates are typically enabled uh, by default via your test flight app. When you're ready to start your first scan, you can press the new scan button from the left side of the gallery view. And now we see what the 3D camera sees. You'll notice I have what's called an April tag target on the floor here, and this is gonna be my start and finish point of my scan. This is an optional best practice to automatically improve the accuracy and quality of your data, especially across larger scans, by tying into the exact center point of these tags automatically. On the simplest level, this would be one tag on the floor that you start and finish at, but as a best practice, you can sometimes utilize two to three tags separated at 10 plus feet on different surfaces and elevations as you see here. So I'm gonna start at these three tags, finish back at them. Again, this is optional, but it is a great best practice to take advantage of. Otherwise, when you're ready to start your scan, you'll want to hold your device still so that the six DOF tracking message goes away and then press the button on the right to begin your scan. You'll notice that tag turns orange automatically, indicating that it has been recognized and we will turn it orange again at the end of our scan. Now that we're capturing data, you'll actually see your color point cloud data set being created on the fly. So you can see what you've captured and what's gonna be built into your data as you move through your scene. And we'll capture each of these tags. And then now it's just a point and shoot process where you walk around your scene and fill in all the detail and everything of importance to you. If something looks like you didn't quite get it to the level of detail that you were hoping for, it may be worth getting in a little bit closer in certain situations. But otherwise, what you see is what you get and you just continue to move through your scene and paint in the full area. You'll notice that with this new iOS release and the tracking that we have access to on the Apple platform, um, the tracking is, is, is really, really strong, even in a challenging space such as this empty large room with white walls. <clears throat> so we're definitely excited about that. As you move through your scene, you can see now, you know, near infinitely all the data that you've captured. So you're not gonna lose that reference point. You can always see, um, as I'll show you here, even from further away, everything that was captured earlier. So it's really easy to just move through your scene and um, almost like mowing the lawn, make sure you've filled in each of the areas of your floor, walls, and ceiling in an interior if you care to capture the ceiling. Well, we will fill it in in this case. The iOS LiDAR is uh, highly capable, not just indoors, but also outdoors. Um, so keep that in mind when you're doing your testing. We'd love to see what you can capture in a variety of environments, indoors and out. So now I'm just moving around to make sure we've gotten everything we need. We're pretty much ready to finish our scan. Before I do so, I'll just quickly show you what the buttons that you have on the screen here can do for you. I'll take an HD photograph of this dartboard by pressing and holding the photo icon, and that'll come up as a higher resolution image that I can pull up in my scan. And I'll capture one of this photo frame as well. In terms of settings that you have on this screen in the top right, you can modify your max range. Currently, I have it maxed out at five meters. I generally recommend that you set the higher uh, range for yourself as well to give yourself that longer range flexibility. And you also wanna leave generally the depth filtering and April tags checked to be detected as we're doing right now. Now we're gonna finish up our scan on those same three April tags that we started at and close out. 
So here we have a quick preview of all the data that was just captured. Uh, this is not the final result, but it is a chance to just take a look at what you got and it looks great. Um, so the next step is to optimize. And we typically will leave all the boxes checked by default to use April tags if you have them and apply color leveling to your scene and press optimize. What's happening here is it's leveling the colors throughout the scene, it's tightening the frame to frame alignment, cleaning up any noise that's recognized in the data, um, implementing any April tag or other targeting constraints uh, if utilized. And uh, this whole process has been rebuilt on the iOS platform to produce highly accurate results and do it extremely quickly and locally on your device. So it's already completely done processing, uh, no cloud computing or additional effort was required, and you're ready to move forward with your data set. You'll notice everything is a little bit brighter, cleaner, crisper, um, and just really looks great. Uh, you can toggle your back faces on and off in the top right. So this will allow you to see through the foreground of your scan, which can be especially helpful for interior scans like this. And then move forward with your data from here and just toggle between the back face options at any point in time. So we'll go through some of the uh, menu items on the top of the screen from left to right. So you see what is currently available in the beta and a little bit of what's coming soon. So from the edit tab here, we have four options. Cropping and quality filtering are not available quite yet, but those will be added soon. Uh, same goes for targeting on the right side that's coming very soon to allow you to reference known measurements and known coordinates to particular targets in your scene. So what we do have today is the coordinate system management. So I'll press coordinates. And this allows you to reference your data set to a particular origin point or other coordinate within your scene. So we see our XYZ axis here um, floating in space. That was the start point of our scan. But let's say we want to reset that to the corner of the room. I'll press set and either pick origin or set coordinate if you're setting it to a different particular coordinate. In this case, we'll just set a zero, zero, zero. And then press and hold on the screen uh, to bring up this zoom icon. And then when you're at a point that you want to set it to, you release. Now we've set the origin point to the corner of the room and we can set our Z axis straight up by pressing primary and holding on the floor and our X axis out of the wall by pressing secondary and holding on the wall. Now every single point in the scene is referenced to this XYZ coordinate system and that will carry through into your export formats as well. Press confirm on the top left um, when you're ready to complete that process. Next, from left to right, we have the measure tab. So our volume measurement tools here are not available uh, quite yet in the iOS release, but the distance capabilities are built in and working well. So if I press measure distance and then add measurement on the top left, you can start measuring from any point to point within your scene. If you wanna measure from point to point here, maybe I wanna turn those axes off. So I'll go to view, show axes, and now measure by clicking and holding again, similar to how we were setting the coordinate system earlier, to that corner point, and then press and hold to the next point I wanna to measure to and from. And then let's say I didn't quite get it just right. It's a very easily adjustable point to make sure you're measuring from exactly where you wanna to measure to and from. And then in the bottom right, you just swipe up to set to the inches of preference uh, that you would like to be working with. You can also duplicate measurements. So if I'm dimensioning this wall here, I'll just press duplicate on the top left and then drag to add a second measurement with that same um, start and finish point. And then again, just adjust to exactly where you wanna be measuring to and from very, very easily. All these measurements will save directly into your file, can be opened up in .3D at a later time. Um, and you can make as many as you want. Next, from left to right, we have the annotation tab. Uh, this allows you to add notes in 3D. So let's say I wanted to add a note to the purple mat here. I could just press add slash detect, hold and release, and select the point that I want to annotate to, add a caption, and then press confirm. And similar to the measurements, these are all saved directly to the file and will carry over in, uh, in .3D file formats. If I wanna add one more annotation to the wall here, 
I'll say point wall one, confirm. You'll notice that you see the option for surface and cylinder annotations that allows you to recognize surfaces and add notes to those, as well as uh, surfaces and as cylinders and pipes. Uh, those are not yet available uh, in the iOS release, but uh, are currently available on our Android and Windows platforms. Next, going from left to right, is the compare feature. Uh, this is not um, currently uh, built into the iOS beta. Uh, this is a feature that allows you to register and compare between a CAD model and a 3D scan. Stay tuned for more on that, but it is currently available on the Windows platform that you could bring your data to after capturing on iOS. The screen recording capability allows you to capture a quick snippet showing off your data um, after you've scanned. So I press that button and I'm immediately capturing everything you see on the screen as a quick little video file. Um, and then you can just press the button on the bottom left to finish when you're done. And if you'd like, um, share the data immediately via email, um, file sharing platforms, social media, etc. Similarly, you can take a strategic screenshot of a particular viewpoint, capturing just the data and important information, not necessarily all the menu items, and share that in a similar fashion. After screenshot, moving again from left to right, we have the share button. Uh, this allows you to share your data, either in the .product file format and other formats, or, or share some of those screenshots, uh, for example. Uh, before we share anything though, we should save our data. In the bottom left, we have the save icon and we can save it to the user defined coordinate system that was set earlier, save scene. Now that we've saved our file, if we go to share, it'll give us two different options in terms of sharing and saving the format. You can share it as a DP file, which is the dot product point cloud format, highly compressed and compatible with 30 plus of our partner applications that can be found on the workflows page of our website or in several other industry standard point cloud formats for maximum compatibility. So if I select as other file, you can see the current formats that are available, which include PTS, PTX, PLY, and PTG. Um, we also expect to add E57 soon, and at, later, at a later date, LAS and LAZ to these direct export options. If you instead decide to go with the DP format, you would just go to share as DP file and save it. Next, we have the view option, and this allows you to um, you know, toggle some different changes to your viewpoint. So if I go to view, we have perspective versus orthographic. So if I go to orthographic view, I can look kind of more straight down on these walls and that floor plan viewpoint. If I really want to look straight down, I'll go to view vantage point top. Now I'm staring straight down on my scan based off of that coordinate system that was set earlier. Also in the view tab, we can take a look at our axes that toggle on and off, our April tags, uh, showing the location of each of those recognized targets, and our high resolution photographs. So I now see these icons in my scan called Frustra, um, showing where I was standing and positioned when these photographs were taken. If I tap on them, they'll bring me there in 3D, but then if I hold on them, they'll bring me there in 2D, giving me some more detail and resolution on particularly important areas, such as uh, areas you need legibility on, uh, areas that need to be repaired or documented, or anything that you would otherwise would have been taking a photograph of anyway, you can now have it all built into your DP file and shared really quickly and easily within a single um, 3D format. In the settings tab, we have several other options um, to um, play with and test uh, during this beta period, including, including annotation customization, um, advanced setting customization, uh, camera settings. So by default, we have the fixed AR kit pose jumps checked and uh, several other AR kit options that you uh, are encouraged to play with and, and give us some feedback on. Otherwise, we do recommend leaving these on the default in most cases. When you're ready to get your data off of the device, you can share to your chosen file management platform or other applications via the share button. Or you can also use a traditional transfer via USB cable to your computer, in which case you would want to utilize the iTunes application for that transfer process. Uh, but in that manner, no internet connection is required. 
And that goes for the entire process here. It's all local and it's all real time. Please stay tuned for more updates to the beta and future tutorial videos as we have much more to show.